What up, watch peeps? 2020 really was a killer year for Seiko. It definitely reinvigorated my desire to add a million Seikos to my collection, just like when I first started. The Willy, the new baby Marine Masters, the Dress KX, and what some might argue as the best release of the year, the new Prospex 62 Moss reissues. Specifically, this limited edition 55th anniversary with the blue dial and gold highlights. That's what I have here today, so let's take a look. I'm Pete, and we are Chillin' With Watches. All right, dudes, let's take a look at this new Seiko. So this is the 55th anniversary limited edition of the 62 Moss reissue. Runs the 6R35 movement. Pretty cool packaging it comes in here. Yeah, look at that guy, it's beautiful. So, kinda already went through this. I think this model is, well, it looks like this is actually the JDM version, the SBDC 107. So it should have like kanji on the tag. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that makes it pretty neat. I don't know if that's more or less desirable. It's still the same watch. But the first thing that I think of when I look at this watch, that the case is a winner. I think they really nailed that vintage skin diver case that everyone's chasing right now. You know, and they, they should have, right? It's a Seiko original design. I love the size on these new, re new reissues. These, the Willy and the new Baby Marine Masters, they're all slightly smaller than that first go round from a couple years ago. And I think that has made a huge difference. Also the handset they used on these, right? It's much truer to the original and well, it's just plain cooler than the overused monster handset. Not, not that I don't like the monster handset, but I, I don't think they should be putting it on everything. The dial on this particular model is awesome. It's got this very subtle sunburst effect, but it's a killer shade of blue. The indices are great. They're like perfectly sized, perfectly proportioned to the watch and the dial. And just those little touches of cold, of cold, those little touches of gold in the text and on the second hand really put this watch over the top for me. I'm a big fan of gilt, but even just this little pop of gold is great too. So there's no chapter ring in this model. And I think that's a really cool departure from Seiko's typical construction. But, you know, it also can't be misaligned, so it's got that going for it. As for the bezel alignment, uh, the action on this one's great. It's really tight, not quite as springy or spongy as, like, you know, I think of an SKX. But the bezel alignment on this thing is spot on. Absolutely perfect. Now, it looks to be... A steel insert. I think that's what Seiko uses. If I can catch the light, you can see the green in it. I think it's just like a steel PVD or some other such coating. Uses a coin bezel, which is a very traditional and, and fitting for this watch, I think. Now the case lines on this watch are terrific. And let's see if I can kind of clean up some of those chamfers. Because it's got really great brushing on the case sides and the top of the lugs. But it's got these big, beautiful polished chamfers on both top and bottom. And I think that gives it this slimmer profile. Of course, it's got drilled lugs. Now, I love the big crown. Three o'clock crown is fine with me. I'm okay with that. Some people will complain that it's not signed. But man, I, I never really cared if a crown was signed or not. It's such a little insignificant thing to me. It's not something I would notice in my daily wear of the watch. Now the bracelet uses solid end links. And I'm not one who thinks the end links need to perfectly match the contours of the case. In fact, I'd argue that doing that exaggerates the lugs and can sometimes make them like make them look big and bulky. So I love the end links here. I, I think they fit, the tolerances are great, they're tight, but they also differentiate themselves from the case and it just makes the bracelet and case both look and wear a little 
smaller, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the right word. So the bracelet itself is great. Nothing revolutionary, but it's very solid. It tapers two millimeters from 20 down to 18. Ideally, I'd love another two millimeters of taper in there, but as long as it's not straight, it works for me. Now, I don't particularly love the clasp, but it is nice. It's milled out, very solid feeling, very positive response. The fold over is new. You'll see that's larger than what you've seen on them before. And that, that's not what bothers me. What I don't like is the diver's extension. I hate this extra piece here. I mean, I suppose it's a dive watch and that's part of its functionality, but for me personally, I just rather not have it. But I think you can easily replace the clasp on these because both ends are like this, straight ends. So you could put any like aftermarket clasp on there if you really wanted to. So let's throw it on the time graph and see how it's running. If you notice, looking at the time grapher, it's always running real close to zero, getting a couple plus ones, plus threes. Sometimes I get even zeros, but uh, accuracy wise, it's fantastic. The amplitude might be reporting a little low, but I think that's because these have a 70 hour power reserve and I only put like 10, 15 turns tops on it just to throw it on here and see what kind of report we're getting. 0.3 beat hour, nothing too significant. I'm not worried about that, but I think it's running really good. Going over the dimensions, we are looking at a 40.5 millimeter case with a 47.3 millimeter lug to lug. And including the crystal, it comes in at about 13.9 millimeters thick and it has 20 millimeter lugs. Going over some of the other specs, it has a sapphire crystal, Seiko Lumibrite, uh, running the 6R35 movement and featuring 200 meters of water resistance. And on the bracelet size for a seven and a quarter inch wrist, it comes in at about 171 grams. And here's how it wears on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I think you can see it kind of hugs the wrist, has a little bit of turn on the lugs. Wears really well. Let's look at it side by side, some other watches. Here it is next to another vintage style diver, the Doxa 300T. I think the Doxa is a millimeter, maybe two larger than the Seiko, but the smaller dial I think makes it appear as a smaller watch. They wear pretty similar. The Doxa wearing slightly larger. Here it is next to the 40 millimeter Helsin Shark Diver, which is a smaller watch, but only by half a millimeter. And I think these two probably wear pretty similar. The Seiko being less flat, so the contours there will make it wear closer to the wrist, which will give you the impression that it's a smaller, more tidy package. Then of course, next to the Seiko SKX, which is again, another millimeter and a half or so larger than the 62 Moss reissue. And these will be using probably very similarly sized dials. Now the chapter ring and bezel, I think kind of is on par with the size of this bezel to dial ratio since it doesn't have a chapter ring. And while the 62 Moss reissue does wear smaller, it's not by a whole lot, but again, thinner and wears closer to the wrist. And lastly, Keep the loom. Like every Seiko I've ever reviewed, the loom is absolutely fantastic. Now this does have the traditional green colored loom, but it is super bright, very evenly applied, fantastic. Here's how it looks on wrist from slightly further back, and I think it kills. I really want to see one of those new baby Marine Masters, but short of seeing one of those in person, I think this might be my favorite new Seiko release. I'm still not convinced I need to play around in the $1,000 Seiko sandbox. I think I could be perfectly happy with the turtles and the monsters, the samurais and the sumos. But there's no denying it is a great watch and if it was coming out of any Swiss brand, it would probably cost twice as much. Before I let you go, Christmas cookie power rankings. All right, coming in at number four, we have peanut butter cookies. Coming in at number three, snickerdoodles. And at number two, sugar cookies. 
just the plain old ones, maybe a little icing. And coming in at number one, caramel thumbprints. Now, I only gave you four because I wanted those uh, Rolo cookies, you know, chocolate cookie with the Rolo in the middle. I wanted that to be in there, but I wasn't really sure that was a Christmas cookie. So we'll give that one an honorable mention. All right, that's it. I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.